Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. It's Thursday, November 4th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. A bipartisan commission is trying to redraw St. Louis County Council district lines. Contention over who is eligible to serve is leaving Republican members particularly frustrated. So it does seem rather silly to be going through all of these uh, gyrations to to try to to have a conversation about some minor changes that are going to happen in the districts. Just ahead, St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports on why some say the County Redistricting Commission needs to be restructured. The St. Louis County Health Department will offer free COVID-19 vaccinations for children this weekend. The announcement comes after federal health officials approved the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. The County Health Department will hold two vaccination events on Saturday, one at the John C. Murphy Health Center, that's in Berkeley, the other at the Rock Road branch of the St. Louis County Library, that is in St. Anne. County Executive Sam Page says getting more children vaccinated is an important step toward ending the pandemic. This is another moment to work together to show the rest of the state and the country that we all want the same thing, a safe community for our children protected from harm. Children do not have to be county residents to get vaccinated at one of these events. Additional vaccination sites for children will be open next week at county libraries and health departments. That full list and appointment details are at stlpr.org. Pride St. Louis will close its LBGTQ Center on Choteau Avenue January 1st and suspend programming. People who use the center say that's disheartening because it's a refuge for many. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson reports. Randy Rafter remembers when the Pride Center first opened its doors four years ago. Since then, he's enjoyed hanging out there, going to meetings and holiday celebrations. Rafter is the director of Black Pride St. Louis. He says the center was a safe space for the LGBTQ community and especially for people of color. Rafter says he will miss the center's roundtables with LGBTQ community leaders. Having that type of safe space where you can be open and to be able to be yourself freely is important. And unfortunately, we're going to have to do that in some virtual and different spaces. Rafter hopes that new inclusive organizations will help fill the void. I'm Andrea Henderson, St. Louis Public Radio. Police officers in St. Charles County will start wearing body cameras by the end of the year. St. Charles County Police Chief Kurt Frizz says body cameras will protect officers and, quote, reaffirm confidence in police services. Officers in the county's police, sheriff, and corrections departments will be required to activate the cameras whenever interacting with others. The system will also include front- and rear-facing recording devices for law enforcement vehicles. The five-year body camera program will cost about $2.5 million. The St. Charles County Council approved that expense earlier this year. A former Illinois lawmaker is pleading guilty to a federal wire fraud charge related to his 2019 push for gambling legislation. Dave McKinney has more. Ex-Democratic State Representative Luis Arroyo entered his plea in federal court in Chicago. Arroyo admitted trying to bribe former Democratic State Senator Terry Link as part of the scheme to help advance legislation benefiting the sweepstakes industry. Arroyo served in the state legislature for 13 years and represented parts of the west and northwest sides of Chicago. He also was part of former House Speaker Michael Madigan's leadership team in the House, though Madigan was not implicated in the scheme. Arroyo now faces up to 20 years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. Sentencing is scheduled for next February. This is Dave McKinney. Legislative bodies, including the St. Louis County Council, are going through the once-every-ten-year redistricting process. A commission split equally between Republicans and Democrats is trying to come up with a map for the county's seven council districts. But as St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum explains, procedural glitches and a high bar to succeed will make agreement difficult. Perfect. Earlier this week, members of a commission tasked with redrawing the St. Louis County Council's seven districts met in Clayton. 
The meeting was not especially contentious, as noted when co-chairman John Bowman delivered a statement on behalf of his Democratic commissioners. We are committed to work towards fair districts that keep St. Louis County communities together, taking into account the importance of municipalities, geographic boundaries, and communities who identify by race or culture. But getting to this point has been anything but smooth. With a late November deadline looming to produce a map, questions over who is eligible to serve dominated the commission's time and energy and left both Republicans and Democrats immensely frustrated. At issue is a provision in the county charter that states that the seven Republican and seven Democratic commissioners cannot hold, quote, public office. St. Louis County Executive Sam Page appointed one Democrat and two Republicans who were either members of a city council or a school board. Two of those members resigned on their own, and a judge ended up kicking GOP member Curtis Faulkner off the commission because he's a member of the special school district board. Faulkner is deciding whether to appeal. Becky Arps is the Republican co-chair of the commission. She says GOP officials believe the public office described in the charter meant a county office, not someone like Faulkner who serves on a school board. She also doesn't understand why there was such drama over the matter when redistricting won't stop Democrats from controlling the county council or make radical changes to what the districts look like. The changes aren't that aren't going to be that dramatic. So it does seem rather silly to be going through all of these uh, gyrations. To, to try to, to have a conversation about some minor changes that are going to happen in the districts. Page is pretty familiar with how this commission works since he served on it back in the early 2010s. When asked why he ended up selecting ineligible commissioners when he had two potential choices for each of the council's seven districts, Page said this. Where along the process did it break down, we certainly accepted Um, the list uh, coming from each central committee as being eligible. And uh, the the folks that were nominated by each committee, um, at least on the Republican side, were eligible. They only had to forfeit um, their other elected office in order to serve on the redistricting committee. Because of the appointment kerfluffle, Page gets to select whoever he wants to replace the four commissioners. Whether that matters toward producing a map that Page likes is unclear, since success requires at least 9 out of 14 votes. Even if Page's two new Republican appointees vote with the Democrats, it's not clear whether the Democratic members will agree on how to proceed. And because of that reality, Bowman is not optimistic that the commission will actually produce a map. In 2011, a federal magistrate ended up drawing the county council lines. That's similar to what happens on the state legislative level, where commissions split evenly between the two parties traditionally deadlock, giving judges responsibility for the final maps. I've seen this process three times, uh, from legislative map drawing. And uh, yeah, pretty much each one of them have ended up in court. Uh, I have not seen a consensus among the commissioners that allows the map to move forward. And even though Arp says she's trying to remain bullish, she said there would have likely been problems producing a map even if there was no contention over the appointments. That's because most of the people on the commission serve on the county's Democratic or Republican Central Committees. She suggested changing the process in the future to have members of other political parties, such as Libertarians or Green Party members, take part in the commission. But Arps and Bowman both say the commission is valuable because it allows for public input. So people want to be able to have their say. People don't really want politicians drawing their lines. Um, so you're, while I wouldn't call myself a politician, I'm probably a more engaged person than, than the average person. So you're going to have the more politically engaged people on these commissions. The commission is slated to hear from the public in the coming days about the redistricting preferences. And commissioners provided themselves with a late November deadline to come up with a map before the judicial branch takes over the process. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway.
Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.